October 10th and finally we're just getting some cooler temperatures. Uh, the air temp this afternoon 75 degrees, water temp 78.4. So uh, this evening we're going to come out and I've got to do some uh, videos on uh, setting jugs and watching the, uh, uh, the showing you how the uh, uh, LED light works as a strike indicator and then after that I'm going to go out and throw a spinnerbait for a while and uh, which is a great passion of mine. There's nothing I would enjoy more in the fall of the year when that bite starts, uh, uh, throwing spinner bay at night and just having that violent strike come out of the darkness, it's just a great experience. But uh, that's what we got planned this evening, and uh, I'll see you in a few. You only see 20 to 30 feet in front of you, but uh, it's exciting. And uh, this is, like I said, out of nowhere, they'll just whack it. You miss a few. But, uh, that's part of it. Some nights, uh, you don't hardly miss any. And some nights, uh, until they really get on the bite, hit and miss. I just missed one just then. It is exciting. Let's see if I can get him bite again. Good little spot. It's a nice one out there. But uh, that's what happened. Like I said, it gets pretty violent at times. Enjoy that. Go down this wall and cast a few times. See if I can catch get another one on film. Uh, just slow rolling the spinner bait. The spinner bait I make. It's a, I make it out of 22 spent bullet casing, 22 caliber. But it's a good little spinner bait. Got another one here. He's a good little spot. I don't know how good you can see him, but uh, he's uh, probably 14 inches. Uh, but uh, nice little spot. We'll release him, let him grow up. Well, it's just after nine now. I call another one. Uh, in the last, uh, since last, they say around 8:30 or so, I've lost. Uh, had three of them drop off the side of the boat, off the hook. But uh, just and then has several short strikes. But we're catching 918. Call another little. It's probably 11 to 12 inch uh, spot. But uh, so uh, they definitely are starting the uh, turn on here, coming on the full moon in a couple of three days. And uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to catching some more. Yeah, 9:45. I just turned the camera off about two minutes and uh, about fourth throw. Call another little spot. But uh, anyway, I'm going to keep on going down this bank and, uh, and uh, keep catching some fish. Good night. Got another one here. It's 9.51 now. And uh, this wall is loaded with them. And uh, there's one jump right there. But uh, 
uh, this wall is loaded with them and uh, I don't know how many we'll catch of them but uh, I am sure having a ball with them but uh, get back <coughs> well this is at least 10 we got in the boat that's a pretty good little spot here um, right now it's 10-15 uh, so I'm going to call it quits on the bank It was a great night of fishing. We fished rock walls, points, and bluff walls. Uh, the uh, fish were everywhere. Uh, conditions were right. It was very productive. Uh, uh, we caught, uh, I boated 10 fish. I had three fish drop off of the, uh, as I was lifting them up over the side of the pontoon. And then I uh, probably missed another 15 or 20 uh, fish. So uh, my cat light reflexes are not what they used to be. But anyway, the rig we was using is uh, I've one of my old favorite rods. It's a quantum rod. I've had this rod for 20 years at least. Um, it's a seven foot rod, medium heavy. I had 30 pound uh, uh, mono line on it. First year I've used 30. I normally use 20 pound, but I wanted to try 30 this year because of uh, the rock and everything. Uh, uh, over the years, every now and then you'll lose one. So I went up to 30. We're going to give it a shot this year and see how it performs. Uh, the reel, just a little uh, Bantam uh, bait caster. And uh, the lure I was using is a lure that I make. It's made out of a 22 caliber spent casing. Um, and uh, it has a hinge design so that the hook and the uh, blade are separated so that uh, you get maximum feel of that blade. It's a great thump. It's a number eight Colorado blade. It's a three quarter ounce lure and it works extremely well. The positioning of my boat on a uh, rip wrap uh, is uh, typically, I try to get up there on that rip, wire, rip wrap and find uh, where it's at least four feet deep, um, uh, 10 to 15 feet off that bank so I can run that bank in safety and not worry about damaging my uh, trolling motor. I go down that rip wrap uh, and cast in the uh, uh, up there in the three to four foot triangle uh, where air, land, and uh, water meet. It just works out really well that way. Uh, uh, that's where the fish drive this bait fish up there and they cruise those areas. You put something in front of them, they'll hit it. Um, the uh, bluff walls, I do the same thing, but over bluff walls you'll be in anywhere from 10 to 30 feet of water sometimes. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, so much about uh, hitting anything with your trolling motor. The points, I stay out there off the points, uh, uh, 30 to 40 feet. Generally, I'm hunting for 10, 15 foot of water and throw up there and work the contour of that point coming out with this uh, center bait. Uh, in those areas, uh, especially on the uh, rip wrap and the uh, bluff walls, when you're that close, uh, you're only casting 30, 40 feet in front of the boat, keeping the lure in that triangle as much as possible and uh, a lot of things happen real quick so uh, there's not a lot of room to play fish and so um, I, I force that fish in get him in the boat just as quick as I can as you'll see on the video but I enjoyed last night and I hope you enjoyed watching this video get a chance to go and try this technique dude um, I enjoy fishing at night boat traffic is less um, and uh, in this time of year the fish aren't as pressured and they're as just a fun all the way around so uh, get a chance to go fishing go enjoy it and i'll see you soon